You've heard me talk about pet peeves in some of my other videos. Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about one of my top pet peeves, and that's shop lights. Yes, these old halogen-type shop lights I do not use any longer. For years, I bought these things. I probably bought over 20 of them. Uh, and you'd bump into them, they'd, they'd, the bulbs would burn out, you'd knock them over, and the ceramics would break. The heads would get floppy. And a lot of times, they didn't even go up high enough so you had to have someone kind of come over and hold the things. Um, I don't like these anymore. I think the last one I purchased was probably 2005. And notice that it's a Craftsman OS. I thought if I purchased the Craftsman shop light, then I would get high quality and wouldn't have problems. But, you know, and, and then you add one more thing, and that's the heat. You know, you, you turn this up to bright, and it's putting out 500 watts, and you're standing right next to it working on the car and the sweat's pouring off you. So I, I decided there had to be a better way. Today I'm gonna to be installing a new rebuilt turbocharger in my 300 SDL, and the challenge in putting this in has to be lighting as much as anything else. If I can't see what I'm doing down in that restricted engine compartment space, then it just makes the job uh, last longer and much less enjoyable. You know, I went to, uh, I went to clip lights. Now clip lights are okay, but you gotta be putting it down in here and clipping it in just the right location and you don't get enough floodlight in the engine compartment or if you're working in the trunk or any other dark area to really be able to see what you're doing. You know, one of my favorite lights is this flashlight with the swivel head. A lot of times you can set the flashlight down in here and swivel the head and get it to point where you're working, but once again, you're only getting a very narrow spot light on the exact point you're working on. And you sometimes need to light up the whole area so you can really see what you're doing. Well, you know, over the last couple of years, I've been doing all these YouTube videos, and almost by accident, I feel I have discovered what is the ideal shop light. Let me show you. Here you can see the space that I have to work in. It's really dark down in this lower area. Using the clip light does light it up, but it's kind of restricted here because I'm going to have to move the clip light to a position where it's kind of out of the way. And then once I start putting uh, the turbo down in, I'm going to get a lot of shadows. The flashlight, you can see the flashlight working in here. It's more of a, uh, a real spotty situation. Even putting the flashlight here and twisting the head, I can kind of, this might work to tighten up a few bolts, but once again, that's quite challenging to even get this thing lit up enough. Now watch what happens when I turn on my new shop light. Yahoo, look at that. Lights up the whole engine bay, and I'm ready to go to work. Well, here it is. Yes, this is my ideal shop light. It's a movie filming light. I have three of these when I shoot my videos. And we just, you know, one time we were doing some rear axle changes under the car, and I thought, man, let's try the movie lights. And we moved a couple movie lights under that car. You can adjust the intensity. Most of these have either a, a variable intensity by switches or by a, you know, a rheostat. The other nice thing is you can move these things way up and way down to get under the car and to get up over the top of an engine compartment. This one here has 500 LED bulbs, and it operates on 50 watts. Yes, that's right, 50 watts. That other sh uh, shop line I had, 500 watts. And you're saying, well, Ken, how much does this cost? Well, these can be 100, if you shop around, you can get one for 130 to 150 dollars. And you might be thinking, hey, that's a lot of money for a shop light. But guess how much money I've spent on those old halogen shop lights over the years. And think about the electricity I've burned running a couple of those in the shop at 1,000 watts, where with two of these on, I'm running 100 watts, which is about as much as a great big fluorescent light. So I am really in love with these movie lights. And I really like LEDs. They don't produce any heat, and they operate on very low uh, wattage. I've uh, get, gotten rid of the clip lights, and I've gone to all LED lights like this one here. Now, once again, this one is restricted in the light that it puts out, but if you're in a tight spot and you just need some direct light, this one has uh, 72 LED lights and operates at 6 watts. So this is a good combination light that goes along with my movie lights now. Now the problem is, you know, I need to use these for working on the cars, and I don't have them for working on 
<laughs> or shooting my video, so I'll probably have to end up uh, getting a few more movie lights. So I'm, I'm telling you, if, you're, if you spend a lot of time working in your car, my buddy, he's going to buy a couple of these just to hang up on the wall to light up his garage. Uh, that's more efficient than, than 10 fluorescent lights. So these are really great to have if you work on your own Mercedes. When you're thinking movie lights, don't just think about shop lights. These things are absolutely amazing. You have got to stay tuned for an upcoming video where I show you what we do with these outdoors.